This is the original Wichita City Hall that was built in 1890 and served until about 1976. Eric Kale is director of the Sedgwick County Historical Museum. Ones who are showing importance to helping the community or helping out education is one of the things that we consider when we're looking at school names. Susan Arnsman is the spokeswoman for Wichita Schools. 1867, this picture shows a survey crew laying out Sedgwick County. John Sedgwick was a Union general killed in the Civil War. Sedgwick was most noted for having his last words immortalized before he was killed in battle. I believe he said they couldn't hit an elephant at this range. Maybe not, but they hit Sedgwick and our county is named for him. The Griffinstein School on East Galena is named for William Griffinstein, a Wichita founder in 1870. He's noted for having platted the town on a grocery sack and moving the original town site from over near North High School to uh, downtown where it is uh, right where we are today. There is Mead Street and the Mead Middle School on East Skinner. J.R. Mead, also a Wichita founder. He's noted for having really been responsible for the naming of the city Wichita after the Indian tribe that was here at the time. Jesse Hunter Black Magnet School on North High, named for a woman who's part of Wichita education history. She was the first public education teacher in Wichita, and so she mostly taught under Jesse Hunter and then got married to Jesse Hunter Black, but that is the reason why that school is named in her honor. The Cloud School on West 25th, Henry Rowe Cloud was the first Native American to graduate from Yale and became nationally known in education. B.F. McLean has a boulevard in his name, a school on Marigold Lane, and a wall in honor of his service to Wichita. He was mayor for three terms, and he also was a bank president. The land where McLean is built, his family owned that land, and the district purchased it from him. Kellogg is probably our busiest road. Milo Kellogg was the first postmaster of Wichita. It was said he could carry the day's mail in his hat. And Murdoch Street, named for another looming large in Wichita history. If you could point to one individual and pin the, the success of the city, the early success on a certain person, it would be Marsh Murdoch, who came to Wichita and founded the Wichita Eagle. English Street is named for a local real estate man who named many of the city streets. The Delano District, named for Columbus Delano, President Grant's Secretary of the Interior. He apparently never came anywhere near Wichita. The Coleman Middle School on Governor, William Coleman's Lantern Company, became nationally known. He was actually involved in education before he began the Coleman Company. He was a principal and he was a school teacher. So not only was he very prominent in helping Wichita and helping the community, he also was an educator. There is a Hyde School on North Oliver and a Hyde Park on South Greenwood. A.A. A. Hyde invented mentholatum, made a lot of money, and gave much of it away to local causes. He also was very active in the community and he helped start the Wichita YMCA and the YWCA. He's one of the few that a uh, school was named after him while he was still alive. And he would spend a lot of time visiting the school once it opened since, you know, it had his name on it. Well, come along, boys, and listen to my tale. I tell you of my troubles on the old Chisholm Trail. Jess Chisholm, a Wichita trader, traveled south to Texas. His trail would become the main route to drive cattle north to meet the railroad. Those cattle drives became part of American legend. Truly a plainsman who understood the area and one of the earliest um, individuals cited in the establishment of, of a community here. In Wichita today, Chisholm's name is everywhere. Businesses, parks, and schools named for him. The railroad came here in 1872, and this became the Chisholm Trail endpoint, making Wichita a cow town, a boom town, and a wild place. For about four years, it was a Wild West cattle town, and everything that came along with it. Cowboys came with it. After months driving cattle, they had time, money, and guns. Wichita needed lawmen. One of the earliest became the most famous. Quieter, quieter, brave, courageous, and bold. Hugh O'Brien, one of many who have played Earp. This episode entitled Earp Comes to Wichita. It's fiction. But they got some things right. Listen closely. Wichita. There she stands, Wyatt. This is Douglas Avenue, our local Broadway. It sure makes Zellsworth look like a stage stop. You're in the big city, Mr. Earp. Texas House, 
Wichita Eagle? Fine newspaper. Mine. The actor is playing Marsh Murdoch, the founder of the Wichita Eagle. Murdoch Street is named for him. In Wichita, Earp was not the legend he would be later, just another deputy, but... Wyatt Earp probably had star power when he was here, but it took a while to develop. He became the, the stuff of legend as the West was fading. Wichita, 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 Wichita. The movie Wichita, big star Joel McRae playing Earp, again fiction. They got one thing right, that sign, everything goes in Wichita, that sign was at the town's entrance. You're a strange man, Wyatt Earp. A side note, the actress playing Earp's girlfriend is Vera Miles, 1947 graduate of Wichita North, later on Miss Kansas. She had a fine career in movies. Oh yes, the other legendary lawman. My name's Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson. You got a lot of courage, Bat. Bat Masterson had roots here. His parents and brother are resting at Highland Cemetery. Earp and he were longtime friends who went on to great fame as lawmen in other places, Dodge City and Tombstone. But what about the legendary outlaw here? Catherine McCarty was the only woman to sign the petition, making Wichita a town. Her son became Billy the Kid. She raised her family here. She was a laundress. Billy the Kid was described by Marsh Murdoch as a street urchin, I understand. The family was well known here in the community. The kid left Wichita as a teenager and found an early grave in New Mexico. The cattle trade mostly ended here in 1876 and Wichita calmed down. But that period helped shape our history. Folks still speak of the marshal of Wichita and today it's a very nice town. Highland Cemetery at 9th and Hillside was the first cemetery in Wichita. And his monument is very tall. I think it's probably 15 feet tall and is topped with a allegorical figure of hope. Eric Kale is talking about William Matheson, a scout, Indian fighter, and a Wichita founder. Matheson Avenue is named for him. In his time, he was considered a hero, famous but modest, called by many the first Buffalo Bill. For saving settlers by delivering buffalo meat to them uh, when they were starving. And I don't think he had to brag. He, he uh, had a great reputation locally based on uh, deeds that uh, everyone knew about. Another whose reputation was based on deeds was one of our most dynamic presidents, Teddy Roosevelt. Roosevelt Avenue is named for him. Just one block east in College Hill is Quentin Avenue, named for Roosevelt's 23-year-old son, Quentin. He was killed in the First World War. Why is Hydraulic Avenue Hydraulic Avenue? Here's why. The hydraulic mill built in 1874 out in the country then, no name for the dirt roads, so it was called Hydraulic after the mill. Lawrence Elementary School is named for Robert Lawrence, a civic and political leader who gave much to Wichita. He was instrumental in the beginning of the Wichita community. He was one of the first Wichita school board members. He contributed a lot to Garfield University, which is now Friends University in that area of town. You've been by Lawrence's home site many times. His home, Maplewood, was one of the earliest mansions here. On that site now is the Masonic home at Seneca and Maple, one of our best known buildings. Lawrence is also the Lawrence of Lawrence Dumont Stadium. The Dumont is Hap Dumont, the sporting goods salesman who founded the National Baseball Congress, bringing much recognition to Wichita. One of our elementary schools is named for a great journalist. William Allen White, obviously, he worked with the Emporia Gazette, and he worked with the Populist Party in Kansas, and he worked at other newspapers and wrote a lot of essays and editorials in the paper, and that got a lot of national attention. Curtis Middle School, you may not know Charles Curtis, but should. This country has had 47 vice presidents, only one a Kansan. He was also half Native American, and so he was known as the first Native American vice president. And he worked a lot on Native American issues when he was in the White House and when he worked as a senator for 30 years. The Bozen Academy is named for Native American artist Black Bear Bozen. You may not know his face or his name, but you surely have seen his best known work. To many, the symbol of Wichita. If you happen to be going um, downtown Wichita, you will see the Keeper of the Plains, the confluence of the big and little Arkansas rivers, and it's a beautiful sculpture that way. So yeah, people do know um, his artwork if they don't know who he is, at least. 